for introducing me to the audience and uh, uh, for inviting me. So, um, could you see my screen? Yes? Yes. Great. So, I in this talk, I essentially show you what I did during my PhD studies. Uh, in particular, this is uh, an application to a practical system of uh, physics or mathematics, let's say. So we are not working at the, the fundamental level, but we will apply uh, hydrodynamic equation to, uh, for describing uh, the motion of a complicated system like a complicated object like a protein. Okay, so um, as a PhD, I have two, this work has been done with uh, my supervisors, Benjamin Stamme at the RWTH and Valeria Calandrini at the Forschung Zentrum Jülich. Okay, so uh, let's start uh, uh, introducing the, the, the big picture behind my research. So as a, you can, as you can understand from the title, I'm interested in understanding uh, the protein, the, the diffusion in the living membrane. Nevertheless, I mean, we have to understand where the lipid is localized, let's say. And in particular, uh, I'm studying in simulation uh, the, the, the diffusion of a protein, uh, which is uh, in the human brain. In particular, you can see that the human brain is made up by uh, a net of uh, neurons. Uh, here you have a, a draft. Uh, each neuron is connected through exon. And uh, the, 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 the connection, the link between uh, the boundary, let's say, of a neuron uh, is defined by an object called synapse. Now, uh, the synapse is like um, uh, a wall between a neuron and another one. And the synapse is essentially made up by the lipid membrane. The lipid membrane is uh, uh, a collection of many uh, objects that you can think of um, as a, a very thin cylinder, so they are very high compared to the radius. So we have many, many cylinder here. And this is a B-layer. So we have uh, a collection here of cylinder and uh, here. Now, within the living membrane, we have a, uh, a protein. So the interesting thing, I mean, uh, essentially, uh, biophys biophysics are interesting in understanding the neurotransmission. And the neurotransmission happens at the level of the neurons. So mm, what is it precisely? The neurotransmission is a process which, is, which gives rise to a human functionalities like memory learning or mood. And uh, it is uh, a chain of electric impulses which are transmitted via the axon from a neuron to another one. Now, uh, when, uh, obviously, in, I mean, in so doing, the, the electric impulses, uh, when pass from a neuron to another one, meet the boundary of a neuron. And this boundary is the synapse. Uh, since the, the, the signal, which is an electric signal, has to pass through the, the synapse, it has to be converted. And the conversion is done by the membrane protein, essentially the red domain in, the, in this picture. Now, the important thing is that, as you, you can imagine, I mean, the protein moves through gout, the lipid membrane. And uh, nevertheless, uh, when the, the, the electric signal arrives here in the synapse, the protein has to be in the there, I mean, in that precise place 
in a, a, a well precise moment. So this is a very complicated um, phenomenon, which is not well understood. But uh, in this work, uh, we are just interested in understanding how the protein moves within the lipid membrane. Okay, so what is well known uh, is that the, 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 the motion of the protein is uh, random. So essentially we have a diffusion. Uh, my scope, my fundamental aim is to study and characterize the protein diffusion in this complicated system uh, environment, sorry, like the living membrane. Okay, let's- All right, Loris, may I ask a yeah, question? Please. Can you go back to that? I, I want to yes. understand the- uh, Here? So Yeah, so this zoom that you're doing here in the synapse, is this a two-dimensional structure or is 1D or- two No, this is a, a, an interesting uh, point. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so mathematically, um, I mean, in order to define the, the, the dimension of the uh, synapse, it's important, uh, I mean, you can determine the dimension uh, looking at the dynamics. If you just have a dynamics along X and Y, Z, uh, I, I'm referring to the, uh, I'm looking at the living membrane, okay? So you, uh, along uh, throughout the living membrane, you have uh, X and Y uh, component, I mean direction, and you have the Z direction, which points uh, outside the living membrane. Uh, what, so the, the structure is obviously three-dimensional because you have three dimensions, X, Y, and also the Z component. Nevertheless, uh, if you wish to describe uh, uh, the motion, you can also reduce yourself to a two-dimensional uh, uh, description because um, overall the Z motion can be disregarded. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so can I go ahead? Please. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's briefly uh, introduce the the brain motion, probably uh, you already know, but let's introduce the most fundamental, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the physical aspect about it. So the brain motion is that phenomenon which appears when a very big particle is uh, um, embedded in an environment made by many other lighter particles. And the large number of collisions between uh, lighter particles and uh, the bigger one gives rise to a resulting erratic motion of the big particle. So uh, you, can, you can see this kind of motion as a, a motion without any kind of uh, direction. So it moves uh, uh, um, on the right, on the left, below and above, without any scope, let's say. But the point is that the, the, the reason of this motion is obviously the, the, the fact that the particle bombarding uh, constantly the, the big particle. Okay, so the, the most, we, we would like to describe, I mean, the, the, the motion and this can be done essentially adopting two approaches. Um, the first one is uh, introducing uh, uh, the so-called uh, um, Poker-Planck equation, where you have a, um, a field description um, of the, the probability density. Essentially, you can, describe, you, you can define the function which gives you the probability to find a particle in a given place uh, at a given time. So you have a, a field in a space and time component. Uh, this approach could allow us to define the partial differential equation, which can be solved for uh, uh, the density function. But in this, 
we do not use this approach, but we adopt, for example, the Langevin equation, uh, which is uh, uh, at the end uh, uh, a sort of Newton equation, Newton equation in the sense that we have a, a balance between the inertial force and the external force. Uh, but the Langevin equation has uh, the peculiarity that it is not uh, a deterministic function, uh, sorry, equation. What does it mean? It means that for each realization, uh, so for if we solve this equation uh, for many initial condition, I mean, for the same initial condition, we will have different dynamics. And for that reason, I mean, we have, uh, I mean, this is the, the, the meaning of uh, stochastic dynamics itself. Now, let, let's describe the object within the, the right hand side. The first term uh, is, a, I mean, the, the right hand side describes the interaction between the big particle and the lighter particles. Uh, in this at this level, we already have a sort of a reduction of the degrees of freedom of the fluid because uh, we are not describing, uh, we are not writing down the equation of motion for every, uh, every lighter particle, but we are describing the, the environment as a sort of, uh, um, I mean, uh, um, as an, a wall object, okay? So we are looking at the collective property of the environment. This property can be split in two contribution. The first one is uh, the, the, the friction uh, term, the friction force. The second one is the stochastic force or noise. The noise describing the, 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 the non-coherent, non uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, collision between lighter particle and big particle. Whereas the um, friction term describe the, the, the friction felt by the big particle when it, um, it is moving throughout the environment. Okay, now in order to, uh, okay, so we should solve this, we, ah, sorry, the last thing very important is that the st stochastic uh, term or noise and the friction term are connected through the, the, the physicists call it uh, fluctuation dissipation uh, uh, relation. So this one where essentially you can, you can connect F at different time uh, with uh, gamma, the, the constant gamma. And uh, clearly by construction, uh, we have uh, instantaneous uh, uh, response of the fluid or environment. Okay, now the characterization of the dynamics uh, can be done in terms of observable, statistical observable, uh, because it doesn't make sense to uh, show a single realization, I mean, to show a single solution of, of this object. Uh, therefore, we have to uh, solve, uh, in practice, we should solve many, many times this, uh, uh, this equation, and we have to average, in some sense, the realizations that we obtain. Now, in practice, what we did is to introduce the so-called mean square displacement, which is, uh, in one dimension, the, the, the square of the difference between the the, 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 the position at the time t and the initial position at uh, the time t zero, therefore, of the big particle. And we average in a, in a certain sense. The physical meaning of the mean square displacement is essentially um, a measure of the volume in actually uh, an area visited by the Brownian particle in a given time lag. The interesting point, I mean, the, the, yeah, I mean, one can completely characterize this system just knowing the, the behavior of the MSD at large and short time 
because in a standard, let's say, uh, Brownian dynamics, we can always recognize two universal regimes. The first one at short time called ballistic, where the MSD is proportional to T square, so the time dependency is this one, and the Brownian regime where the MSD is proportional to T. Now, in a more complicated system like uh, the, the um, protein motion in, in a complicated system, um, sorry, environment like the, pro, uh, the membrane, this one, we no longer have just ballistic and Brownian regime, but we have an additional regime, which is called uh, subdiffusive one. Um, okay, so here you can see the numerical MSD that I obtained from um, MD simulation using the software Gromax. Uh, essentially, one uh, build a system. This is the uh, snapshot of the system in Gromax. One uh, have many, many uh, particles with a precise interaction. This interaction uh, characterize the lipid. Uh, I mean, you will have different interaction depending on the object that you are going to describe. For example, we have different interaction between uh, protein, uh, I mean, uh, atoms within the protein. These interactions are different than those that you can find in the lipid membrane. But essentially, here you can include all the electrostatic interaction or uh, um, bounded interaction for describing the, the, the fact that the protein doesn't uh, break and so on. Okay, so from an MD simulation, I uh, obtained this uh, uh, numerical MSD. And here you, you can easily recognize the ballistic regime. Here you have T square. The Brownian regime, T, proportion to T, but here, you no longer can define a well-precise regime, a time dependency in the MSD. In particular, so, Luis yeah, asks, so, so the dynamics you're talking about here, this is not uh, um, a Langevin equation. This is molecular dynamics you're simulating in the lipid membrane here. Yeah, yeah, I, I said I used the acronym uh, MD, yeah, but sure, this is the molecular dynamics simulation. So, so it's you are deterministic. Uh, yeah, in principle. Yeah, in principle, yes. It, I guess yeah. it's only the initial condition which is random, or is it? Uh... Yeah, you have to impose an initial condition. I mean, it's mm, subtle the situation here because. Um, are you talking about the initial condition for the proteins for uh, what in particular? Uh, I, for, I, I guess for the velocity and position of all the all the particles in your analysis. Yes, yeah, yeah. You, you fix uh, a given temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, for the position, for example, usually you can download um, from um, a particular um, website, the, the crystallized uh, position, I mean, the crystallized, I would say, yeah, position of each uh, atoms uh, in the protein, for example. So there, has a, there is an experiment, they crystallize the protein, they uh, launch uh, X-ray, and they have uh, essentially uh, a picture of the protein. Uh, this is the initial, you can use this initial condition for the protein. Whereas for the lipid membrane is quite different. You can, you can guess some initial condition assuming the, 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 the Boltzmann distribution of the velocity, for example. And you have to equilibrate the system several times in order to reach the, the minimum of the energy, more or less the minimum. And, and this, this kind of regimes that you observe, uh, which relate to diffusion, uh, this is because the 
the um, the atoms or the particles in this dynamics they have a very different mass is that the reason or yeah e yep but mm, yes they have for sure you can you have a, a separation in the time scales that you can see as a very different uh, masses for i mean the mass of the protein is very different than the mass of the lipid membrane. So you have, uh, of the lipid, sorry. Uh, so you can consider the lipid as a um, small object compared to the protein, and you are in the setting of the Brownian uh, 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 diffusion. I mean, Brownian, uh, yeah, the diffusion. Uh, this regime, uh, I mean, this, the, the appearance of this regime, the origin of this regime is due to the uh, non-trivial interactions between lipid membrane and uh, protein. In particular, it seems that the lipid membrane VA, um, um, shows a collective behavior. So for sure you can you can think the lipid membrane as a collection of particles which are smaller but also um, lighter than the protein but this is not enough you also have uh, a collective behavior of the lipid membrane this uh, obviously the, the the research is open <laughs> In this field, but this is my feeling. I mean, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, so we can say immediately something about the subdiffusive regime. And uh, okay, um, as I told to Ogon, I mean, the, 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 the reason of the emergence of the subdiffusive regime could be attributed to non trivial interaction between membrane and protein. In particular, we have a, a non instantaneous interaction. So we have memory effects. Uh, this regime is transitory. So after a certain time, we will, we will recover, sorry, the brown regime. And uh, okay, so that's all for the moment. Now, uh, at this level, we can nevertheless describe also the memory effect. So we, we have a theory for describing the memory effect. This is built by Svansig many years ago. And essentially it consists to replace this term or actually uh, to replace the, the constant uh, here, gamma, with a time dependent function and so to have a convolution between the velocity vector field of the protein with a, a certain function, kernel function, which should be determined or, I mean, um, defined um, at least heuristically. Moreover, we can still define the fluctuation dissipation theorem. In, uh, we can connect F tilde S with uh, zeta in this way. Now, clearly, we no longer have a dira delta function, but we have exactly zeta. And OK, but I mean, this approach, it's not satisfactory for several reasons. So if I give you this system and I ask you, OK, tell me how zeta is made, you cannot answer. You should say, OK, let's try uh, with uh, this kind of a zeta. Let's try with an exponential function, a power law, whatever. But the point uh, um, isn't, mm, I mean, we have two problems. The first one, we have to determine the dependent uh, of zeta. The second one, we have to interpret it physically. And at this level, we can just give uh, uh, heuristic uh, 
model, I mean, or nevertheless, nevertheless, I mean, empirical model. Uh, so uh, at this level, I mm, propose, I mean, I proposed uh, a model which is able to, to mm, give, to give uh, a physical meaning of this object. Essentially, mm, at the beginning of this work, uh, two, uh, um, I, I, I had in mind two aims. The, the first one is to derive a generalized Langevin equation like this one, where zeta represents the response function of the membrane to a certain deformation which is caused by the protein. And it, it has got a well precise meaning in the context of hydrodynamics, we will see later. The second point is also that to describe, to give a mathematical expression, I mean, to have a mathematical expression for the uh, mean square displacement, for example. Uh, in the literature, for example, people uh, proposed uh, a predetermined time dependence for the MSD. For example, they said, okay, the MSD, I go back, the, 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 the MSD is proportional to a constant, I mean, an object d alpha, d alpha times t to the power alpha, where both d, the function d, and alpha are time-dependent function. So you give a well precise uh, structure, but you lose in physical interpretation because alpha depends on time, d depends on time, so everything depends on time. You, you have fixed the structure of the MSD, but you, you cannot interpret alpha as a, a particular, uh, or d with a particular meaning. d should be the diffusion coefficient, but you cannot uh, say, uh, say that uh, so easily. Okay, so my aim was also that to uh, provide a mathematical expression for the MSD, which is uh, uh, valid um, over all the dynamic regimes, and in particular, which also depends on few parameters, which are really parameters and not function of time. Okay, so uh, in order to do that, uh, we introduced a model that we call the effective model uh, essentially, we reduce the system to this kind of uh, uh, structure. Uh, we have protein and lipid membrane and water. Uh, sorry, probably I didn't told you, but here there's water, also water, but I remove it in order to, I mean, for a matter of better visual visualization, but we also have water. So the system is very complicated. Now, uh, I immediately remove uh, the water because I said the role of water is that to confine the protein within the lipid membrane. So we can think the system as composed by lipid membrane and protein, and we haven't any motion along the Z component. The protein is modeled by a rigid sphere, which is subjected to modified Ehlert's law, modified for a sense that we will see later. Uh, whereas the lipid membrane is modeled by a linear viscoelastic fluid. Essentially, uh, the viscosity of the fluid is a time dependent function. Okay, now we have to write down the equation uh, of motion for the lipid membrane and the protein. Uh, but we can, uh, I mean, in general, we should start from neighbor Stokes equation. So we have a, a, a really complicated uh, system of partial differential equation. Nevertheless, uh, since of the, 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 the nature of the physical system, we can immediately say, okay, we can immediately reduce ourselves to the Stokes regime, namely Reynolds, uh, low Reynolds number. So we haven't any uh, 
turbulence within the lipid membrane. This is reasonable. And we also introduce the, we also assume uh, a steady state flow. So essentially U, which is the um, velocity vector field for the lipid membrane, uh, that doesn't depend on time. And we also assume that in the Neverstokes equation that I didn't wrote, I didn't write, uh, appear this term and we disregard it. Okay, what does it mean? It means that the neighbor Stokes reduces to this so-called Stokes equation, which is essentially the divergence of the Cauchy stress tense. Now, let's proceed step by step. In general, for describing a fluid, we need of the Stokes or neighbor Stokes equation. We need of the a condition of incompressibility for the velocity vector field u, which is essentially the divergence of u is equal to zero, which means that you cannot uh, squeeze uh, the, 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 the fluid as much as you want. Um, and you also need of the constitutive equation of uh, the, the constitutive equation, which is a relation between the stress felt by the fluid because of a deformation imposed to the fluid. The, the stress is, the, is described, is represented by the Cauchy stress tensor and the deformation by the strain tensor. Okay, so this is the constitutive equation. We obviously also impose some boundary condition, but we will do that later. Now, if we have a Newtonian fluid, so a, a standard fluid, not, not a linear viscoelastic fluid, but a standard fluid like Newtonian fluid, the constitutive equation becomes just, mm, just these two terms without this one. Uh, and so this term represents the viscous behavior of the system. Now, if we want to describe memory effect, we have to include some uh, non-instantaneous deformation, I mean, a propagation of the deformation. In order to do that, we introduce linearly, that's the reason why we are calling linear viscoelastic fluid. We introduce the elastic contribution or the elastic behavior of the fluid, which is essentially, uh, you, you see, this is the deformation which propagates in, to the time t through, um, in a delay way, through this uh, uh, function. So the introduction of an explicit time dependence we, uh, in the Cauchy stress tensor here, give rise to viscoelastic fluid. Since we are doing that linearly, we have a linear viscoelastic fluid. Now, the S part describes the elastic response of the fluid, whereas the first two terms describe the viscous behavior of fluid. Okay, now uh, for, the, for the protein, I, um, we should consider, uh, in principle, the Ehlers law, which is essentially this equation without psi. And this means that the, the force felt by the protein is given by the integral of the Cauchy stress tensor, uh, scalar n, the normal to the protein surface, and this integral has to be done on the protein surface. So nevertheless, uh, I mean, uh, we, are, we also have to consider, uh, to take into account, I mean, uh, the, the atomistic nature uh, of the, the lipid membrane. So um, because at this scale, this time and, and the length scale, 
it's important and in the domestic nature it's important that's the reason why we have a diffusion for the living membrane if uh, sorry for the protein and the only way to do that is uh, to add this term xi which should represent formally uh, a noise clearly at this level we cannot formulate any fluctuation dissipation theorem so at this level it doesn't make sense to add this noise, okay? But we will see the reason why I already uh, introduced the, 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 the noise at this level, because uh, once we have solved this equation, including also uh, boundary condition, this equation reduces to this one. Essentially, you see, please remember this part, this integral reduces to the integral in time of zeta times u of c. There, we will allow to for, uh, formulate the fluctuation dissipation theorem. That's the reason why I already introduced xi here. What else? Um, okay, uh, yeah, I will say it's fine at this level. Okay, now, we have to, um, ah, okay, the, the idea. Uh, now, we have to solve this equation. Uh, we have to formally solve this equation. Uh, essentially, we have to, for, to, to search for a solution for P and U. Uh, here this is the equation to solve. This is written in an intrinsic way, but that's the, the equation. We have to solve for P and U. Uh, once we have solved it, we can substitute, we impose some boundary condition. And here, the boundary condition are between little u and capital U, relates, let's say, capital uh, U and little u. And therefore, the solution uh, imposing the boundary condition uh, give rise here to a term where explicitly appears u of c. So the idea is to uh, eliminate the degrees of freedom of the membrane in order to obtain an equation which is uh, which will take the form of a GLE, generalized Langevin equation. Now, Doris, may I ask a question, please? Yeah, please. Can you go back? So here in, in this uh, last equation, you, you are assuming that you have the euler cauchy cut with Tn, and, uh, but T also incorporates a non-local term, which is S, right? So yeah. did you prove or did you have any reference that proves that the euler cauchy hypothesis is still valid if you have a non-local term in the stress? Um, I didn't um, prove by myself, but there is a um, very extended literature behind uh, made by mathematician. Yeah, so but the, li the literature, uh, the literature, there is no proof in the literature as, as far as I know ah, okay. that, tells, that tells that this hypothesis is still true if you have okay. a non-local term in the stress. Um, so I wonder if you know uh, uh, no, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, but as a physicist, I said, come on, <laughs> there is. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't know, honestly. I, in effect, I, mm, I just saw something. Uh, I mean, I saw this equation written for T without an explicit time dependency. Uh, but uh, no, I never saw something with an explicit time dependency here. So I I couldn't say okay this is uh, this is true, this works and so on. Okay, no uh, no problem. J just uh, out of curiosity. And this <laughs> the second question is: uh, Do you have uh, the thermodynamics for this uh, model, uh, the first and second law? or the and, energy imbalance or something to that effect? Uh, it would be very, very interesting and uh, to this level of uh, details. Uh, 
uh, no, I, I never studied the, the thermodynamics, uh, I mean, property of the system. Uh, but it will be really interesting in my opinion. And in the literature, there is nothing about. Uh, I think this is a, also an interesting, uh, how to say, uh, aspect of this field to investigate because the thermodynamics of this uh, system, so you, 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 could, uh, you could do any simulation. So you have an experiment, you have data, but there isn't a, a strong theory behind. I mean, you could apply uh, the standard uh, method of, uh, um, of uh, statistical mechanics uh, and so on. But uh, as I'm trying to, to let you uh, feel, we are at a particular um, uh, lens or time scale. We are at the mesoscopic level. So we, we, we haven't, in physics at least, a theory which describes a, a really, really, a mesoscopic uh, uh, system. We could describe very well the the, 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 the atomic structure of, uh, of property of the, the matter, the continuum property of the matter, but we haven't something for describing coherently uh, the, the property of the system, of mesoscopic system. So in principle, uh, it, this means, this means if, in order to answer to your question, I mean, uh, this is an open field very often and probably nobody work so much uh, um, on uh, this aspect. And me too, I mean, I didn't study, um, I didn't study the thermodynamic aspect of this equation. So I didn't couple this, uh, this equation with the, entro the equation for the entropy, for uh, the, 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 the heat and so on and so forth. Yeah, no worries. It's a uh, very challenging. So thank you for your answer. No, you're welcome. Thank you too. Okay, so let's write the equation. Uh, I mean, the Cauchy um, the constitutive equation. Uh, we can essentially rewrite this term as the convolution between the data uh, uh, delta function and this term, the strain tensor in tau. So this term here. Uh, we add, we include within the, this integral also this term, we explicitly write the right hand side here. And this is the constitutive equation. Now we apply the divergence here. And uh, I mean, with a bit of, uh, let's say algebra, we get this equation, where mu of f is essentially this function. And clearly the, the divergence of d uh, gives one half the Laplacian of u. Uh, now, in order to apply the standard method um, for solving a Stokes equation like uh, Osin stands or so on, we should have uh, a linear a local in time equation. And whereas this equation, it's not local in time. We have a convolution. But nevertheless, we could apply the Fourier transform and, and we will work always at this level, I mean, in the frequency domain, let's say. Now here we can apply the Osin stance. I mean, we can introduce the Osin tensor, which is written here, where it, Mm, uh, directly depends on omega through the function mu. Uh, but the spatial dependence is the same as in, in, in for, uh, let's say, Newton and fluid. Now, for solving this equation, I adopted, for example, the single layer potential. Essentially, I said, okay, the solution u for the the, 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 the lipid membrane 
the, for the fluid is given by the convolution, the, the spatial convolution between the Olsen tensor and uh, an unknown vector phi, which can be determined once the once introduces the boundary condition. Uh, okay, I also made a further assumption which which can be interpreted as a sort of point-like uh, assumption, and I I could I expand uh, this term, the Dawson tensor, with respect to this distance, and I just take consider the the, the, the leading the, the first term of the expansion. Uh, in physics, this means that uh, we are looking at the particle, the, 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 the protein in this case, as uh, I mean, we are looking at the fluid, uh, the solution far from the, 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 the point. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I introduced the, this term for describing the solution around the protein, okay? But introducing this assumption, I'm looking at the, the fluid far from the protein itself. This is the, 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 probably the most rigorous way for interpreting this expansion. Otherwise, we could say, okay, let's assume that with respect to the, the, the fluid length scale, the protein is somehow could be viewed somehow as a point, or I mean, a very uh, small particle. So the, the last interpretation is what we will, uh, it is what we, um, we have considered. Okay, in this way, we, uh, this equation can be rewritten in this, uh, so F is the integral over the, the protein surface of phi. And if we replace uh, u here, obviously we should also uh, show a solution for p, but it's standard. Uh, so we should solve p and u. We replace p here and u, but this is very standard for p. At the end, t can be rewritten this way. So we have a time uh, spatial dependence and T depends on F, which has to be determined. Let's see how. As I told you, uh, we have to introduce the boundary condition at the level of the protein surface. Uh, this is for the X, Y component. Clearly, I assume no slip uh, boundary condition. For the Z component, I we have a motion. Okay. Uh, clearly, a point on the protein surface can be free, can be the the velocity of a point can be decomposed into the velocity of the center of mass of the protein plus the uh, the, the derivative with respect to t of the uh, position the, the vector. Which, con, uh, which connect the center of mass with the point P on the surface. Clearly, since the protein is assumed to be a rigid motion, a, a rigid body, uh, this vector could just rotate around the center of mass. You, you cannot have any elongation. Uh, okay, now we apply the boundary condition here to this expression, which is given here. Clearly, u tilde for x, y is now, is now uh, equal to capital U. So we could integrate both sides of this equation uh, on the protein surface. And I mean, with a bit of algebra, we directly have this, um, uh, result. We solved for uh, f, and this is the, the relation in uh, frequency. Clearly, we could uh, go back with the inverse Fourier transform, and we have uh, 
uh, convolution between mu f and u c. It's interesting that this, we are going closer and closer to the structure of a GLE because, uh, you know, uh, okay, I will discuss later, probably it's better. Okay, in fact, so we obtain this. Now, the cauchy tensor was written this way, if you remember. And if we go back to the time domain, we have this relation easily. Now, what does it mean? It means that if we replace F within this term, we get uh, this relation. The interesting fact is that if you remember here, we had T uh, scalar N integrated on the protein surface, but T depended on U, okay, sorry, little U, the, the velocity vector field of the membrane. Now we have related through the boundary condition solving the Stokes equation, little u with capital U. So we are very, very close to the structure of a GLE, essentially. Oh, Laurie, so, sorry for interrupting you again. Here, yeah, sure. the, the Cauchy stress, stress tensor depends on X and X is the special variable. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, but, the, but then, yeah, you're right. then this is not a Galilean invariant, is it? Uh, no, because I, yeah, because I referred everything to the center of mass of the protein. Okay. Okay. okay uh, but I didn't write. Uh, right. Sorry. <laughs> You're right. You're perfectly right. Uh, I use as a reference, uh, as a um, frame of reference, uh, that of the the protein. So the origin e, uh, is localized on the center of mass of the protein, and I'm referring everything with respect to this origin, okay? And for sure, so here you should have X minus XC and the time invariance is a restored, uh, sorry, the Galilean invariance is a restored because you have okay. differences. Thank you. Uh, thank you, you too. Okay, so we are very close to the GLE, in fact, we should integrate, now it's easy to integrate, to do this uh, integration because uh, X can be rewritten as R times N introducing the, the, the spherical coordinates. And so you replace this expression here, you apply, you substitute this one here and we get this expression. Now, uh, the, the, the array mark uh, is important now. Uh, essentially, the degrees of freedom of the membrane, which um, have been uh, uh, eliminated, nevertheless uh, appear in the um, friction term for the uh, protein equation of motion. And uh, if we look at the system from the protein viewpoint, so just looking at the dynamics of the protein, we can recognize a sort of, uh, I mean, a collective behavior of the protein itself. This collective behavior uh, is given by the, the by definition, I mean, by the uh, friction term, because the, all the complicated interactions between the protein and the, the, the particle composing the environment are condensed within this term. Uh, okay, now let's pass to the next. Okay, so we have now to formulate the, uh, the fluctuation dissipation theorem. Essentially, we have to recognize this term, we have to treat this term as a colored stochastic thermal noise. And uh, in fact, zeta now is, uh, sorry, zeta is this one, even here. And the fluctuation dissipation relation can be written this way. Uh, okay, and now we can interpret this object, this equation as a GLE, generalized Langevin equation. And the, the, the interesting fact is that the, vis, the, visco, the viscosity function uh, mu 
f, the response function uh, to a deformation, appears within the, um, the, 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 the kernel function for the jelly. This is I mean, we have a physical interpretation of this object. We can immediately say, okay, let's go back to the, 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 the I mean, if we have a system, another system, uh, more complicated, whatever, uh, we can study the, the property of the environment as a fluid. So we are dropping any um, molecular information, the, the information about the atomistic nature of, of the system. So we can drop essentially any MD simulation. We can just study the, the behavior of the environment as a, as a uh, wall. And therefore we, can, we should directly go back to study to see how the Cauchy stress tensor is made. We can directly see the Cauchy stress tensor or we can build the Cauchy stress tensor in order to have an appropriate, uh, an appropriate zeta here. Okay, nevertheless, uh, we have to characterize G because I said, okay, we have a function G uh, which describe a delay uh, for, or I mean, this uh, uh, elastic response of the fluid, but we have to give an explicit time dependence. Now in the literature, people used, uh, for example, there is uh, the um, uh, olidroid uh, Stokes uh, um, fluid where essentially G, which means that G is a um, time uh, dependent uh, exponential function, which decays in time. But this system is very, uh, very, I mean, the behavior is trivial, or at least it's not appropriate for describing the protein. Because uh, for example, if you have a G, like uh, an exponential, here we will have a plateau. And this is not mm, fine, I mean. Otherwise, people uh, increase the complexity of this function introducing a metaglef, one parameter metaglefer function, also two parameter metaglefer function. Uh, I propose the three parameter metaglefer function. And uh, uh, okay, so the metagrapher function is a three parameter in particular is quite complicated uh, because uh, mm, you, you have a serious representation, uh, but the, the, the behavior, I mean, people uh, still is uh, still studying the, the um, I mean, the literature, there isn't, um, all the information about the three parameter metagrapher function. People are studying, for example, the, the asymptotic behavior and so on. So this is a, a function with many uh, properties which uh, still have to be uh, understood. Okay, so clearly G uh, has to be done in order that at a short time or at t equal to zero, this object has to reduce to zero. So we have to um, include uh, well property, at least from a physical viewpoint. And so we also add uh, this uh, uh, power law. In this way, this object goes to zero at infinity, but also in zero. Uh, okay, so, I mean, without entering in this boring, uh, property or description the three parameter metagrapher function because at the end one could use everything here, everything. I propose the three parameter metagrapher function because uh, uh, nobody did it. And also because uh, uh, there is the only way for, for recover almost exactly uh, the, then the the, the numerical MSD. Okay. So, Another sorry, uh, Loris, yeah. Uh, yeah, just to tell you that you are running over time, just to, can you just... Uh, okay, finish? I can directly go because 
these are technical uh, points. One can uh, solve this uh, equation uh, through the Laplace method, essentially apply the Laplace form. Uh, how much time I still have? Uh, two minutes? Yes, yeah. Oh, From okay. Here. Okay, great. So one can solve it. Uh, one re uh, at the end, this is the solution given term of a function h, which is the h of t, which is the inverse of the form of this object. Know that here p are zeta, so this is very complicated. You can use the, the formal solution for building up the Fourier uh, sorry, the MSD. The interesting fact, if you do the algebra, so you have to build up this object. If you do the algebra using the, uh, the property of the thermal average, the factorization dissipation theorem, at the end, the mean square displacement depends just on i of t. i of t is this function, sorry, here. You can use everything. Uh, now, the point, I mean, all the efforts, in order to get to solve the model, um, I mean, consists in uh, computing the inverse Laplace transform of this object. Clearly, uh, for general uh, for general uh, parameters, it's impossible. So I use the uh, some numerical uh, uh, inversion, and I also. Uh, use an optimization scheme for uh, um, finding the best fitting parameters um, within the metagrapher function. So on. at the end, on the left-hand side, we have the, MS, the numerical MSD. On the right-hand side, there is a comparison between the model and the numerical MD. MSD, sorry. And uh, okay, so this is the, the, the result that we obtained. And so it, 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 that's enough, I mean. <laughs> okay, so I, I could skip this part because this is just a, a summary of what I did. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your talk.